in the Southern District of New York, in the District of Columbia, and in Chicago. Now, that's a global exclusive because no one's been paying attention to the fine details like yours truly and our team and our researchers. That's all hiding in plain view. And just like I told you Trump would declare a national emergency to stop the border crisis, months later, I mean, I said that back in October of last year, months later, he was going to do it but didn't do it. And then he let them hurt the economy instead of just stepping in and using executive power to checkmate them. And I'm not saying it's a mistake. Maybe he's smarter than I am. Time will tell. But notice you heard about the national emergency here first. I wasn't wrong when it didn't happen. They were intending to do it, and it was the right move. With this Mueller thing, folks know I'm right about 98% of the time. This Mueller thing, because I'm talking about it, they might change it. Probably not, though. They think they've diminished us and you know, have cut our uh, reach down, actually have made it more influential in elite circles. They've cut the reach some down to the general public, but that's kind of a feedback loop, though. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. It actually may be helping us, but time will tell. The point is, I'm going to lay out the global exclusive. When we have all the pieces, you know, I always get obsessed with showing you the pieces, and most of you have more pieces than I do. That's why the broadcast is popular, is that I'm stating things that news hounds and historians and lay researchers already know, but the news will never echo because they don't want you to think that you're normal or in the majority. That's perception management. That's the fraud we're dealing with. So tonight, I'm going to get into their plan to remove Trump and exactly how they're going to do it. And if he ever thought that they were telling him the truth about Russiagate, he's about to really, really get a rude awakening. They have used Russiagate as the dragnet to harass anyone and everyone connected to him, including hundreds of lawyers he has in hundreds of jurisdictions for real estate. And they catch a few dozen lawyers out of a few hundred not paying taxes or things like that. They start indicting them, as they've done, in D.C., in New York, in Chicago. Well, then a lot of them will roll over and make something up about Trump. So it was never about Russia. They, kn they knew there was nothing there. They were always going to discredit the election with that in people's minds, call all their domestic enemies Russian agents, like they've done me, the deplatforming. They order ISPs to shut us down. They say, he's a Russian, House Intelligence Committee. No proof, no face my accusers, it's asinine. What does Camilla Harris come out and said? We got to remove Trump from office. We got to shut down his prominent supporters. She said just Friday. She said it's a national security issue. I'm telling all new app applications that you can't mention world government, Satanism, abortion, conservatism, mainline Christian groups banned on Facebook. It's here. Ever wanted to know what total tyranny looked like? <clears throat> You're about to get. Front row seats to it, ladies and gentlemen. And InfoWars is only a canary in the coal mine. Now, here's what's going to happen at the bottom of the hour. At the bottom of the hour, I'm going to reveal the plan to remove the president from office. They've wanted us off air because we actually study U.S. law, U.S. codes, covert action, how globalists have operated in the past. And we've laid out exactly what their plan has been for two years against Trump and against America. Now we've confirmed their attack profile. So we're going to give you their exact plan and how it's going to be rolled out. Even beyond the indictments of people very close to the president and indictments of the president himself. It's coming. Now they're telling the president just work with the system, appoint George Herbert Walker Bush's former attorney general, just appoint all of Mueller's former adjuncts, and we'll leave you alone. That is the total setup and the total betrayal. They do not want Trump to be a kept president, and he's so stubborn he wouldn't do that anyways. They plan on removing him and destroying him and ushering in 
and authoritarianism that the likes of which this planet's never seen. So that's the bottom of the hour. We're going to break that down. Knowing this information could stop it. Uh, we'll see if folks are going to be able to get the word out on all of this. Now, let me get into all the rest of the news that we're going to be covering today, and then I'll plunge next segment into our first story, our first big report. Obviously, that's going to be Alexandria Cortez, AOC, the habitation of uh, evil spirit uh, is her nickname. The abode of demons is her uh, birth name. We're going to be discussing her and her latest fraud where it was on the site for 12 hours on her congressional site that they're going to ban air flight and ban fossil fuels and, quote, let people not work if they don't feel like it and much more. Now, uh, now, this was on NPR. They, she, it, it's an archive.org. It's on Bing's archive. It's on Google archive. We're going to put it all on screen for you and show you the URL. <clears throat> Didn't matter. She had a flotilla of minions go out onto all of the different channels and say it's fake news conspiracy theory. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's fake news conspiracy theory. And all the big fact check sites are saying it is. This is the organized criminal evil of the censors and their lies. So that's coming up in the next segment with some amazing clips and more. And, and let's cue up this professor who's involved in it all, who I thought I was tuning into like a comedy piece um, Friday night. I was still up here working in the break room uh, and going over some research and some groups were going to be filing lawsuits on. Uh, very important lawsuits uh, for, to defend free speech and to stop their racketeering. It's not going to be going the old free speech route like everybody else does. We have the goods on the uh, collusion and tortious interference and monopoly activities. I'm sorry. I'll get to that later, too, once those suits are filed, because we're about to strike back in a big way. But uh, continuing, it's just amazing to watch the professor go on Tucker Carlson and just say, nope, it's made up fake news. And then he, he does this little fake intellectual Dr. Evil deal, and he has the most ridiculous toupee I've ever seen because the left thinks it makes him look ironic and smart, kind of that Einstein trick to look like uh, he's had a mushroom cloud on top of his head. So we're going to be uh, looking at all that uh, as well. If, if I forgot to tell you guys, get that Tucker Carlson clip. It's at Infowars.com. Uh, articles, uh, right? It's just the first minute or so. The guy is unbelievably hilarious. If it wasn't so dangerous, you know, this is unintentional comedy by these mental patients. And he just sits there and says, nope, it was never put out. It's fake news. And Carlson is laughing because it was up 12 hours. Pelosi responded and said it was BS, that it was stupid. And their answer was to remove it and say it was never there. Part of their hateful disdain for truth. And then we're going to get into how... Google won't work with the Pentagon on AI, autonomous weapons, which would be a good idea maybe if they didn't do it for anybody, but they did it for China, and they're launching slaughter bots. That's their slaughter bots. I'm not kidding. Can kill without human command. That's up on Infowars.com from Newsmax.com. The Sun has it. China unleashes killer bots and drones that carry out airstrikes on their own. How loving. So we're going to get to all that coming up, and then how Google helps Chinese military. Why not U.S.? Now, the Defense Department asked, because our Congress are a bunch of traitors, or they're mentally ill, or they've got low IQs. I mean, I sit there and watch the Google and, and other executives just lie, go, oh, we've never censored anything in our entire uh, history. Meanwhile, Google reaches deals with Russia, China, and Saudi Arabia to censor everyone. And Google reaches deals, and Apple reaches deals to help target and round people up and to track women in live time if they try to drive a car and, and call the government. I mean, this is AP. But they told Congress, we've never helped a foreign government censor. 
We've never had a plan here in the U.S. We've never targeted conservatives. We've never, meanwhile, we have all their internal videos, all their own documents, you know, specifically. It's like, who do we mainly target? This is in you know, roundtable groups of executives. Well, Alex Jones is the number one problem. And then any other dumbass veterans or anybody with American flags. That's Twitter and Google and internal. And they're, ha, 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 Alex Jones and veterans and American flags. Oh, and those rednecks and white people. These are quotes. But everything's okay. <laughs> everything's all right. Imagine the total disdain these people have from our open and free society and how they've used it against us and our idiot elite. More busy trying to sell us off to the highest bidder and, and then mount American exceptionalism and independence on the wall. Because these, these, these authoritarians were born and raised and trained to hate American. That was the best option for the president instead of letting there be a government shutdown that would simply hurt the economy and let the Democrats get what they wanted. Well, he's now come out in tweets and said they want to hurt the economy. They don't want us to do well. That's why I don't let them have shutdowns. That's why I tried, you know, to not have a shutdown. But he went on to say uh, that basically, uh, as he did a few weeks ago, he may declare an emergency. Well, now that's what he's leaning towards because it's in his prerogative. It's under the executive branch, clearly, and it won't cost uh, a fraction as much money as 2 to $3 billion a week that we lose with a shutdown. So it's very, very important for the president to exercise that power. He's clearly shown that the Democrats are obstructionist. They want to hurt the economy. He's tweeted that out. He's pointed that out a few months ago, a few weeks ago, and again, just a few days ago. The president is on solid legal ground to declare a national emergency. There have been 58 national emergencies declared since the law was enacted in 76, and 31 right now that are currently active. So this is hardly unprecedented. And that's the president today. So again, that's tomorrow's news today. He also tweeted out today that they want a shutdown, that the Democrats, again, want to do that to hurt the economy. So when I tell you this stuff's going on, I'm almost always right from research, but also sources. But most of the time, it's not sources, because I research this stuff 20 hours a day sometimes, usually 10, 15 hours a day. I'm obsessed. This is basically all I do. And so a lot of points go into this, and I'm going to cover it in this segment and the next and the next. It'll take probably 30, 40 minutes to cover this properly. DrudgeReport.com is also linked right at the top of the middle column. Live InfoWars, Mueller set to end Russia probe developing. So most of this is open source. Most of this information is all the little thousands of things they've said and done. Uh, what Pocahontas came out and said today in a speech, we'll play that clip next segment, uh, where she says that he probably won't even be president for the 2020 race. Now, what is she talking about? She's a senator. She's, you know, she's in the top three or four people running. Why, why is she now saying this? Because that's the plan. So let me go ahead and get into this right now. We know that Mueller was about two things. Well, really three things. Covering up all the criminal wiretaps and spying on the Trump campaign, Trump the nominee, Trump the president-elect, and Trump the president. So it was meant to be parallel construction where they were illegally spying, but they launched these new investigations to cover up the other criminal investigations that were going on without warrants. We broke that over two years ago. That's now confirmed. That's number one, but not as important. Number two, it's done to discredit the entire election and make it really sound like an outside foreign power was meddling, not illegal aliens and people voting the names of dead people and massive election fraud by Democrats where they got caught. So it's meant to delegitimize the election. Everybody's like, yeah, Alex, we know that. Tell us something we don't know. I'm just laying history out here. So cover up them using the national security apparatus, which I first told you, and it turned out they were using foreign spy apparatus on the president during the campaign so they could keep it secret from the courts. Then they used that fake info and fake foreign dossiers to get the ongoing investigation launched. Discredit the election. And then now the finale, which is really the number one reason out of three. Launch a giant dragnet over the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of top lawyers 
thousands of lawyers and managers total that Trump has at hundreds of properties in almost every state of the union. Well, he's got like properties, was like 26 states or something? Ridiculous and sub properties or pieces of properties in almost every state. In fact, look up how many places in the U.S. he has properties. I know it's insane. He's got properties over 30 countries. I know that. And, and if you notice, the dragnets are all, oh, this lawyer didn't pay taxes on uh, taxi cab medallions, or this lawyer himself didn't pay all of his property tax, but he's Trump's lawyer, or this lawyer uh, might have laundered some money. These are just lawyers he hires. So they have this huge Russia dragnet, suck everything into it, interview all of his renters and owners and managers and just his family and just harass everybody for years on end two two years use all their illegal wiretaps and stuff to find dirt on people they're targeting not connected to russia gate or even trump and then get a huge assemblage of people who are about to go to prison unless they turn state's evidence against somebody in the trump orbit a don jr a uh, uh, Jared Kushner, a uh, Ivanka Trump. And so the dragnet works that way, trying to get them to then flip and turn state's evidence. And so here's, here's the intel we've got, and, and this is a little bit I got from sources. I got one call from, let's just say, the military attached to the CIA and somebody that doesn't play games. And they said, hey, I'll be able to talk to you over the phone again in mid-March. It'll all be over then. Then I got a call from a former high-level CIA person involved with the Pentagon saying, you know, your boy Trump's done and you better get, get straight what you're going to do or you're going to be in a world of hurt. And I said, go to hell. And then I got another call. And then I got another call. And then I got a, another text message from a very prominent person very, it's a household name saying Trump is going to be gone. And that's just the way it is. And it's his fault for not standing up for himself. And it's going to get really bloody and really bad if he isn't gone. So things will be better after he's gone. So, let me break this down for you, ladies and gentlemen. They're threatening everybody and they're telling everybody that Trump's going to be gone by mid-March. I told you that in October when I first started getting these calls. And I've talked to some very prominent people and they've been told the exact same thing. And that's how you take a country down. Now, now listen to me carefully. You know the French didn't fight Hitler in 1940. You know that in Gulf War I and Gulf War II, they bought off most of the generals so they stood down when the U.S. attacked. That, that, that's how real military operations go, is you, you buy off the opposition and you activate your spies inside of it. So, so what's happening is they're reaching out to everybody saying, you'll be okay as long as you don't try to stop this. It's going down. And only people like Sean Hannity and myself and a few others are, are not taking the threats. And that a lot of sources I have and things could talk to me again and then because I would not be implicated in Russiagate anymore but that they had used the dragnet uh, against uh, Trump and his family and all of his companies and all of his employees to try to find other criminal activities, not of Trump, but of anybody not paying taxes, uh, a la what we saw with Cohen. And I kept getting these calls, I kept getting these text messages by very prominent people. And then, again, about a month ago, I got one from an extremely prominent person, and, and they've been given the same talking to. And their argument is Trump isn't standing up for himself, so he kind of deserves it. And, and at a certain point, when somebody won't stand up against a criminal conspiracy because they're innocent, they think, oh, that's ridiculous, and then they're going to get taken down. I'm not mad at Trump. I'm just kind of really upset about what's going on here. Now, Drudge's link to this article that has the live feed in it. I suggest folks share this because I'm going to condense what's happening right now and then go to the evidence. Live Sunday exclusive. Mueller probe to end March 1st, or thereabouts, New York, D.C., and Chicago to announce criminal indictments 
of Trump after. And again, those are the federal U.S. attorneys and prosecutors in those areas. That's the plan. So Mueller was simply there to cover up the illegal spying that was going on, discredit the election uh, in the minds of the people. But then the coup de grace, the final blow, the dessert, the main, the main mission, the main course, really, uh, the end game uh, is to then launch all these criminal indictments of people all around Trump and then create a firestorm that he is a criminal and doesn't need to be in office and then to trigger civil unrest and so much more in a hope to plunge the economy because this will kill. Here's another prediction. If they do this, because I'm not saying this is going to happen, but it's like a bank robber has the gun to the, you know, the teller's head. They might pull the trigger. This is currently their plan. And, and you can see them saying all this too. I mean, th th they admit a lot of this, but it's the behind the scenes preparation, the threats, that it'll be better for you and your family, Alex, if you just sit this one out. Well, what does sitting it out mean? We'll say the president's an idiot and turn against him. Well, that's not true and I'm not doing it. You know, what's the next thing I'm supposed to do? It's just, I mean, th th there's got to be some point where people don't back down. America was built on not backing down. That's why we were exceptional. Everywhere else, everybody backed down. And you end up in Nazi Germany or communist Venezuela. I'm done. Because the men that back down in this country make me sick. But, but I, I'm, I'm digressing. Let, let's get into the evidence here. So they end the Russia probe, and they'll have the House continue it with Schiff and, and, the, and the Judiciary Committee, it, so this will never admit that it was uh, you know, over, but there's nothing there. They admit that the Senate Intelligence Committee and all the rest have said zero, nothing. Yeah, I know, it's all Hillary and Mueller and the rest of them. It's ridiculous. Change the subject onto your enemy of what you've actually done, which was another side component. They picked something to allege that Trump and his supporters had done because they were guilty of it and scared you-know-what about it. And so how this works is quite simple. They have the regular suspects now introducing articles of impeachment tomorrow for the third time. Multiple Democrat bills will be introduced this week. Democrat Al Green, what a idiot, vows to move forward with third impeachment effort, dividing party. Boy, he loves to run America down all day, but man, he sure done well in this country. They love our milk and honey. But they preach some other way of living. When you're running down my country, Hoss, you're walking on the fight inside of me. I'd like to see a country run by Mr. Green, or founded by Mr. Green. Mr. Dumbass. Excuse me, I'm digressing. And you've got Elizabeth Warren. Let's get that clip ready. This is just today. Stumping in where Iowa, Trump may not even be a free person by 2020. And she says, every day it's a racist tweet. It's a, another. This is the party of the KKK race baiting everywhere. This is Trump literally uh, doing the proper type of affirmative action, demanding giant factories be built in specifically black areas, that they be incentivized to have job training and hire them for dignity. But I'm not going to go into Trump's history buying up all these golf courses that blacks couldn't attend and having new leadership and, and then actually incentivizing ambassadors to get black folks to come play because they were so freaked out they wouldn't come play. Trump handing out free memberships to black people. Plus, it was smart. He'd hand them out to, like, sports legends and people. Everybody wants to be around those guys. I mean, it's a smart guy. Oh, my gosh, he's KKK. This is the sickness of this by the real ruling class that's literally KKK. I, I'm digressing. So, so here, here's here's Pocahontas, the wi widest person ever, point zero 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 four two. Yeah, you know, I mean, whatever. I mean, the woman is ridiculous. You, you could look at a Native American and, and 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 you know have a higher higher DNA count than this. Now this lying fraud that says she was Native American on a bar card in Texas, an impeachable a, a um, disbarable offense. She's now up here tremulating with that shaking, pathetic, chicken neck you know, social climbing voice of hers that Trump's going to be in prison before 2020. So she's kind of telegraphing the plan. Let's go to this coward. 
every day there's a racist tweet, a hateful tweet, something really dark and ugly. Are we going to let him use those to divide us? You know, here's what bothers me. By the time we get to 2020, Donald Trump may not even be president. So you're about to see a 21st century coup where they illegally spy, they demonize, they lie, they put out fake reports, they undermine, they try to destroy the economy, they put out a huge dragnet in all areas that Trump owns, a hotel or a golf course or a casino or anything else, and they look at everything he does and everybody that works for him, and all they can find is Michael Cohen and a few other people. But now they've had beavering away at the Southern District of New York. That's going to be the main assault. It'll probably be that's where they'll do it first. But I'm told in March they will announce criminal indictments of a bunch of Trump associates. They will announce that. And then it'll be in D.C. All controlled areas, controlled juries, controlled judges. Then it'll be, oh, Chicago. Chicago. Where they've already had a bunch of raids on all the Trump properties and all his lawyers and everybody else. And people are doing plea deals behind the scenes. And none of it to do with the old fur-capped Russians. Not any vodka, not any Ruskies, not any Red Stars, folks. It's all about taking down the red, white, and blue. And then all the crimes of the Clintons, and all the crimes of the deep state selling out the country and Benghazi and all, none of that's a problem. Illegal servers, Arab Springs, funding the radical Muslims, none of that's a problem. It's all El Presidente. So when we come back, I'll get into all the other articles here. But Trump is person one, he's target one, he's organization one, that's all admitted. So what do you do? Simple. You're illegally spying on him as a candidate. You're using international espionage operations to do it. We first reported on that two plus years ago, now confirmed. That's illegal. You use that illegal operation and fake dossiers to start a new criminal investigation in the United States once he's elected. Then you use that to try to discredit his election, connecting it to Russians. That's not true. But you use the dragnet to find people in his circle or in his orbit who you can find for tax problems, money laundering, gambling, sex, who knows what it is, like Mr. Cohen, and you start indicting them, and then you tell them, if you tell us a bunch of dirt about the president, or you say he knew about this crime you were committing, or that crime you were committing on property taxes, whatever the case may be, we're going to let you go for a reduced sentence. And that's the ball of wax. And that's what different uh, people who've been involved in this have come out and actually said they've been offered and said they've been told. They've been given sheets and been told, you are to do this. Rudolph Giuliani, Trump's chief lawyer, has said he's seen the agreements because of joint defense agreements they have with some of these individuals like Dr. Corsi. They've given Corsi these big list of things he's supposed to say. I'm not going to get in the middle of you know who's good, who's bad between him and Roger and their fight. I just know this, they're trying to make Corsi say things that aren't true, and so far, he's, he's, he, he's withstood it, uh, and that's a good thing. But, but, but now you've seen Roger, uh, who's, who's been indicted, and none of it is Russia. It's all process. It's all he lied to Congress, with no evidence of that. Where is the Russia crime? It's not there. So, you've got 150 prosecutors in the Southern District and they have been collecting data on Trump since he was a candidate. And they're coming after him. And all the inside baseball I've heard is they're going to make their move in March. Mueller's going to end it. He's going to put his report out. But then out of that report, remember it was Mueller admittedly doing the Russiagate investigation that, quote, came across Michael Cohen the rat not paying his $15 million in taxes. And it wasn't even all him. He had a bunch of partners in the company not paying for the medallions, faking medallions. Well, that's an old scam. The taxes are so high in New York, if you don't cheat on your taxes, you're going to go bankrupt. I'm not saying that's a good thing. The point is, is that what is Mueller doing investigating medallions? 
and unpaid city taxes. In fact, what are the feds doing involved in that? Well, their argument is it's money laundering. Okay. So then he, quote, alerts the Southern District. In fact, type it into a search engine. Mueller alerted Southern District to Michael Cohen. So that's the MO. I'm not just telling you this is my opinion. This is what they've done. This is what they've set up. It's not going to be Schiff of the Judiciary Committee covering up Russia Gate and China Gate for Hillary and Server Gate. It's not going to be any of that. No, no, no. It's all going to be Trump associates who are facing long prison sentences because the corrupt Mueller probe has done a fine tooth comb of every facet of their life and found some fleas, found some cooties, found some ticks. And that's how America dies is with an out of control federal prosecutorial system who is in the, the WikiLeaks and who is in the documents and is who in the text saying insurance policy. We can't let him get in. If he does, we got to have something to take him down. Any investigation that has something like that in it is null and void. All the more reason it became the drag debt when there was no Russiagate two years ago. Strzok and Page and Org, all of them are saying, there's nothing here. This guy's incredibly clean. There's no foreign entanglements. There's nothing. We don't know what we're going to do. Most of Hillary's money was from foreign governments, including Russia. And so they say, well, just keep hammering it while we find some dirt on something. Move forward. And that's the plan. So I asked the listeners, I asked the world, I asked Matt Drudge, who's obviously tuned in right now. I asked Tucker Carlson. I asked Sean Hannity. I asked Rush Limbaugh. I asked everybody. You know when they get Trump, they're coming for everybody else. They've said they are. They know America's turned against globalism and leftist garbage. They know we're awake. They know that they're on TV saying, let's abort babies after they're born. They know people are fundamentally sick of this and, and are vomiting it out, are, are rejecting it. They're raping us. It's like serial abuse. We're literally like beaten wives here, literally. Just get out of my life. Leave me alone. No, they say. We're coming after your speech. We're coming after your bank accounts. We're coming after everybody, your kids. And so what do we do? I, mean, I hope Whitaker's a good guy. The way they attacked him viciously at, the, uh, viciously at those hearings, we'll play some of that next hour. Looks like he is, but the new guy Trump put in is literally Robert Mueller's daddy, Burr. The guy that brought him in the guy that set up the CIA in 89 to take over the FBI. Because the FBI had its problems before. But the left didn't like it because it was anti-communist and had a little soft spot for Americana. And a lot of their agents were good people. But man, since then, what have you seen? The FBI has become a puppet of the worst elements of the CIA. The worst elements of the CIA. And some people online go, look, I knew Jones was CIA. He said he talked to him. It's like saying I talked to a New York Times reporter. The CIA is the biggest federal agency out there outside of the post office. Their people are everywhere. I have been messed with by the Mossad. I have been jacked with by MI6 and MI5. I have been jacked with by Saudi intelligence. I have been people claiming to work for Russians like 10 years ago, a couple times in New York, you know, said, Putin likes you. You like blonde woman? Uh, no, no. Uh, well, you like, you like, you like uh, investment in stock market. I'm like, no, get away from me. That's my extent of the Russians trying to get to me. And you're prominent. You get spies coming up to you. With the Russians, it was incredibly blatant. You like woman, she like you. With everybody else, it was like, well, we're thinking about whether we're going to do something bad to you or not. <laughs> we're thinking about if we're going to allow you to, you know, keep. <laughs> a lot of people die around here, Jones. <laughs> Might want to join the club and be our bitch. Plus, you're a pretty smart guy. Might do pretty well for yourself. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. See, because there's a few people still act like this is America. I'm not going to put up with your crap. You supposedly have all this power to fight big evil groups, but you're allied with radical Islam, you're allied with the Chai Coms, who literally have got all of our technology and now have all these AI weapons and we don't. You're called traitors. You're called candy asses that rolled over to every foreign power and every white shoe boy you could find. So I'm done with you. But when we start the next hour, I'm going to get into what Trump needs to do to counter this.
And I'm going to open the phones up, but we'll get 30 calls, then I won't get to all of you. So we're going to take six or seven phone calls that are specifically on topic of what do you think Trump needs to do to avert this and stop this? Because as clear as day, this is coming, and it's happening, and the next phase is here. They use the Mueller probe to illegally launch all these investigations, to go and harass everybody, to then lie about the president and set this up, and now they're making their move. So what does the president need to do? This is a very important broadcast, and they've wanted us off the air before they do this. Now, let me mention them wanting us off the air. It's going to be dozens of indictments, and it's going to be two or three indictments a week um, for a month or so, and then they're just going to call for the president to step down. And that's what Elizabeth Warren is telegraphing. That's what they're all saying. And then this whole reign of terror taking the banking away of conservatives, libertarians, that's now expanding to even mainline groups is going to get even worse, and the left is going to just unleash its leftist stormtroopers and just start attacking everybody. I mean, they're taking the country down. And America had this instinct and got Trump in to stop it, and he's done a great job on so many fronts, but I sent you guys some compilations of the hearings with uh, Whitaker Friday, right? I mean, we've got some of these where they're like, where did you come from? Who are you? I said, shut up. I wasn't talking to you. I've been watching C-SPAN since I was in high school. I've never seen anything like it. These people are mad dogs. So I'm going to open the phones up specifically on clearly they're making their move on Trump. They've said they are. Can you believe Russiagate was all a fraud? Well, yeah, but now it was used as the dragnet to get dirt on other people on non-related Russia stuff to then blackmail them into bearing false witness against the president. I mean, that's it. That's all that's happening here, period. And we're just going to sit here and allow the total third world style banana republic slash Hitler slash Soviet Union slash chi -Com. That's who's actually funding at the chi -Coms. This is crazy. I remember two years ago watching the Chinese dictator at Davos. He said, with Juncker, the drunk heir to all the Nazi fortune, literally, for the most powerful Nazi family saying, don't worry, we'll defeat America, we'll defeat Trump, and giggling and laughing. And I thought, I, I played the clip over and over again, I read the headlines for like two months straight, and people didn't care, because they have no instincts as a nation to organize themselves and stop this. And there's the Chinese dictator and the, and, and the, 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 the EU dictator, he's unelected, just saying, we're going to destroy America, F you. And he said, we'll crush your economy. And, you know, about a year and a half later, I'm like, aha, you didn't crush us. You know, but the Federal Reserve said, which is 80% foreign owned, they said, we do crush you. And started the crushing. You think Americans will be mad with the foreign governments working with the Federal Reserve, private Federal Reserve, to crush us and saying they'll crush us. And then a bunch of corrupt law firms and corrupt lawyers with badges and guns running around doing whatever they want and the Democrats getting all pissed when Trump says we're against humans trafficking and smuggling and busted all these uh, kidnappers and, and, and we need to stop killing babies after they're born. And they're like, no, we don't. Pelosi wouldn't stand and Cortez shook her head and Camilla Harris shook her head. And I'm like, listen, I didn't believe the Wicked Witch of the East existed in uh, movies like The Wizard of Oz. But you know what? It does exist in the real world. And it just makes me ashamed of this country. You know, part of me is a proud of it and proud of the listeners and viewers and proud of what we've done together and proud of the good people out there that have stood up for what's right. But man, shouldn't it be that much easier to win against evil? Here is Elizabeth Warren. Every day, there's a racist tweet, a hateful tweet, something really dark and ugly. Are we going to let him use those to divide us? You know, here's what bothers me. By the time we get to 2020, Donald Trump may not even be president. Yeah, well, you may not even have your bar card because you lied and said you were Native American to get into college and, and get preferential treatment on affirmative action, and you lied to, uh, to get your bar card. You are a sack of garbage. Uh, now, let's give out the toll-free number on the specific question. We're taking calls on this one issue. 
What does Trump need to do to strike back against the swamp? Because they're getting ready in less than a month to end the fake Mueller investigation, which was used as an illegal dragnet to get blackmail stuff in non rush related things on anybody in his orbit to lie about him to save their yellow hides. See, if we just weren't a nation of yellow hided people, or if there wasn't a lot of us, we wouldn't live like third world slaves, would we? If we had chivalry again, and just you couldn't make us run, couldn't make us bow. People always think that's like a real tough guys are like that. No, smart people are like that. I couldn't imagine living on my knees. Hey, teach his own. Like Patrick Henry said, the war has already started in the North. While we sit here idle, the clash of arms, you can hear it. And listen, if you want to let your chain sit lightly upon you, slave, crouch down, lick the hand that feeds you, I'm paraphrasing, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. I mean, the Chai Coms have just walked in here and taken this country over. So here's the toll-free number, 877-789-2539, 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. There comes a time after generations of appeasement and decades of groveling that laying down doesn't get you passed over, it gets you destroyed. The stagnation, the entropy of groveling it it creates a absolute system of sycophants. People don't learn how to farm or be engineers or fight or be leaders or be doctors or, or be, be counted by what they produce and what they stand for and how good their name is. Oh, that family, huh, their name's incredible. They never sell out. They never back down. If you can get business with them, it's the best thing. People are lined up around the block. Then there's always the scammers around the back alley that nobody wants to work with because their name is mud, quite literally. Eight seven 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 eight nine two five three nine. I'm just taking six or seven calls because I've learned to not just take fifty and then I can't get to everybody. That way, it's specifically what does Trump need to do? That's coming up. If you just joined us again, the big announcement. It's it's. Uh, Top linked up on DrudgeReport.com, right there in the middle column. Live InfoWars, Mueller set to end Russia probe, developing. And that's private intel I've got, but it's also prosecutors are all leaving in droves. And they're going and joining the House Judiciary Committee. And they're hiring former members of the Trump administration, which is a total violation of uh, presidential separation and presidential privilege, it's, it's unprecedented. And they're going to back to work at the North District of, they're in Chicago, and they're going back to the Southern District of New York, and they're going back to the District of Criminals uh, there in DC. And they're all getting ready to open up Trump by going after everybody he knows. So I guess we're just gonna sit here and take it. Oh, the whole Russia thing was fake. Oh, but we got, you know, 30 indictments. Yeah, 13 of them, fake Russian bots, and the rest, all nothing. Like, one time in a bar in Italy, somebody talked to a Russian who was really a double agent. And one guy had sex with a Russian woman he married. Well, my God, that's a real crimer. And we sit here and we watch this. You know, Trump does have a lot of cards to play, but he better start playing them. You know, the good news is, another Drudge Report headline, Trump leans towards declaring state of emergency. Yeah, if he'd have done that up front and said, I'm not going to let them hurt the economy with a shutdown, and I've got the executive power, that'd have been boss, huh? But he listened to those advisors instead of himself. He was going to do it. But then they had West Point bitch to him. Sir, we need our new barracks. You know, the robots are replacing us, and we've all got to go in here and learn how to be trannies. Seriously. So he said, oh, yeah, let me listen to the to the commandant, we need a new barracks for our candy asses. I mean, you know, give me a break, man. The border is falling apart. Giant, organized UN waves are attacking. And we're gonna sit there and believe that West Point really bitched. No, it's because it, he's gonna take funds. You don't need to take funds from that. 
We spent almost $2 trillion in Afghanistan. Just cut the troops by 30%. You'll get all the wall funding you need for a double wall, for a $20 billion wall, not a $5 billion wall. It's all UN replacement migration. I saw a headline of a national poll out of France. And it was 25% of French believe the UN and the, and the EU are bringing in all these migrants to replace them. Well, that means 25% read because the UN openly says that's what they're doing. Say so if I walked up to you and I said, I'm going to break your nose right now. And I punch you and I break your nose. And only 25% of the people watching go, did he just break his nose? So that's the plan. We'll take your calls coming up. But after we take some of those calls, I'm then going to get to some of the Whitaker testimony that I found riveting. We were live on air when it was happening, but we were releasing the exclusive proof that CNN was already there earlier uh, and, and did work with the FBI and did lie about the whole thing, serious criminal activity uh, on a felony warrant by the FBI and by CNN, and then the lying to everybody and saying it didn't happen. Huge exclusive video. But the Whitaker testimony after I got off air, I ended up watching large portions of the last few days, and I have not seen child molesters treated like this in court. I mean, you would think, and you've got these obviously mental midget uh, congressmen from these dirtbag blue cities that, you know, think islands float and all the rest of it, going, who are you? Where the hell you come from? So we're going to play the clip. Yeah, it's in that article. Trump blasts hatred to scorn from vicious Democrats at Whitaker hearing. You got to see this. It's up on Infowars.com and Newswars.com. But to show the upside down world, Democrats all posted the worst of this stuff as well. And they think it's really cool to just say, to like ask a question and go, shut up, I didn't ask a question. Like, who are you? Why are you here? Well, I'm, I didn't that tell you to talk, boy. It's like the, the, the sergeant in full metal jacket, Hartman, where he's like, choke yourself. I said, okay, I didn't see you do it with my hand. I mean, it goes on for freaking hours. I've never, it was like Sergeant Hartman, except at least Sergeant Hartman had chewed some dirt. These were all evil, blue city, weirdo, dumbass, low IQ filth, dredged up by the Chai Coms in Hollywood because they were the... Because America had the promise of Christianity and of capitalism and free market. And the corporations, they're not communists. They use communism to control us at the grassroots to make us dependent, domesticated. They're globalist. They're like Jeff Bezos, who pays no tax in cities, pays no federal tax. All his money goes offshore. He makes cities compete with each other where nothing's paid. His employees get screwed. It's like Instacart. Doesn't even pay its employees. It gets the tips and then gives that to themselves and then gives the employee almost nothing. If you look at Silicon Valley, nothing's more soulless. Nothing's more hateful. Nothing's more automated. Nothing's more anti-human. Nothing's more sicky, sweet, liberal on the surface because that's the SJW cover is to tell you how good they are, to tell you how much they love you, but to hate humanity. So what should Trump do to strike back against this? I've got some ideas. I'll talk about it at the start of the next segment, but I want to get your ideas. Daniel, Teddy, Michael, Stan, Paul, Carlos, and others. Let's talk to Carlos first from Montreal, Canada. He's a, he's a caller, gets in every few months, always has great points. Carlos, do you agree about the crisis we're in, the move they're about to make? I mean, hell, they're admitting it, 90% of it. And what do you think we sh the president should do? Thank you. Yes, I share your views, Alex. Um, I, you, con you concentrate on the vast evidence and knowledge of history. That's very important. And then you focus and narrow down, and you see patterns that repeat, and then you focus and narrow down to the level that you now make, can make predictions from semantic analysis of the things that are said and why they're said. Uh, I, I, I'm long in the tooth uh, in, this, in this attitude, and I recognize in you, and you the most powerful assistance to the president that, that he can count on is to have people like you who really know the background and can make predictions. Now, having said that, I'll tell you something about President Trump, also strongest weapon, and that is that evil does not respect or manipulate, but fears facts. And the facts 
for President Trump are clear. This is a self-financed businessman, a billionaire, who's had to make tough decisions all his life, and to decide to run for high office with dirty background, dirty laundry, or things in the closet are certainly not the right things that have... It's not a white yeah, no, he would never He would never do that. He, he, he went by the book with top law firms on everything. That's why they're targeting the law firms to get them to lie. Right. The, the next thing is that he was... Um, uh, in, I guess naive as a person who's never been in politics a long, long period and been in Congress and Senate and so on, and, and, or a governor of states or whatever, that he, the, the political world wasn't his expertise. So when he became president, that was his greatest weakness because as Rienz Priebus was told when he was in charge of the Republican Party was, get rid of that candidate. Whatever you have to do, get rid of him. That was in the newspapers. That was said. So No, exactly. The very on. fact that he'd never been in office, he could turn things around because he had a fresh approach, but it's also his greatest weakness because he does it other tricks. Great point, Carlos. We're going to move quickly here. Uh, we're going to go to Reggie in California. Trump needs to audit the Fed. I agree. Go after the privately foreign-owned Fed. That will get their attention. That's a great place to counter-strike. Instead of fighting the minions with fake indictments of his family and others, go directly at their power. Go directly at the private Federal Reserve. Uh, go ahead, uh, Reggie. Absolutely. we got to audit the Fed and the Fed. We do need some other system of currency, uh, you know, all these things. But also March 1st is the debt ceiling hits the limit again. And, I mean, what, nobody's even talking about that. March 1st is a couple weeks away. We're going to hit the debt ceiling again. Every six months we're hitting the debt ceiling. And these politicians, it almost seems like both of them are aware that they are having to sigh off us into not even focusing on it. That's right. Well, the word is that I heard, like I said, in October, I said March is when they're going to end the Russia probe, go into all the new criminal probes. And notice they said a, a month ago, they said, oh, it'll end by February. So it's been announced that senators are saying they've been told in early March Mueller ends it. So I'm, I'm announcing things that they've already announced. They may change it. The intent of this show is to get so much information out there that uh, there's so much light on this that it doesn't happen. I appreciate your call, Reggie. Great point. Let's go to a caller in Oregon. Let's talk to Daniel. Daniel, you're on the air. Thanks for calling tonight. Oh, great for ha having me, Alex. Um, I was thinking that Trump, you know, he really is a master strategist. A lot of people don't give him credit. Uh, but his sister, who's a federal judge, she stopped playing board games with him and card games with him when they were young because she said that he would always win. Uh, and he seemed like he didn't even know how to play. But he was, you know, just always uh, playing possum or something like that. Um, I also know someone in business who had business dealings with Donald Trump. And he said that Donald Trump had 13 contingency plans for every business move that he made. So a lot of that's instinctive. A lot of that. Okay, well, that pisses me off that if, if Trump is this master 50 level chess, you know, Yoda on PCP then he's not defending the First Amendment and all the censorship of conservatives and nationalists and patriots and veterans groups that have been run over and destroyed and attacked and not even allowed to be in commerce, literally unpersoned. This is like Nazi-level stuff because no, Hitler didn't start killing people to, uh, who weren't his own Nazis in power struggles until about 37. He took their bank accounts away. He took their businesses away. He demonized them. So if Trump's got all this master stuff going on, uh, then, then we need to see it. I mean, what's he doing letting the First Amendment hang out here, you know, to, to flail around the wind? I agree, Alex. And the thing, you know, you may very well be right. Like, he could just be going out there like a, a boxing opponent and allowing the, the, his, his opponent to, uh, you know, hit him in the jaw as hard as he can. But you never know if, if you know, I, I think that if, if Donald Trump... Well, here's the deal. Here, here's the deal, okay? If you want to say some idiot savant, master guy, he did get elected never running for office of the presidency. Nobody's done that but George Washington. Here's the problem. Letting them do all this and persecute people is wrong. So saying he's letting us be sacrificial lambs to piss people off, he's got all the proof, he's got all the evidence... And I know folks that are close to the president, they say that's not the case. He's watching Fox News all day. So he's making these big multi-chess moves then off of that. I agree he's still smart at 72, but he's not covering his butt. I appreciate your call.
He says a lot of cards to play. He didn't tell me the cards to play, but we're out of time. We'll come back with a few more calls, and I've got some more uh, clips I want to play. Teddy in Chicago. Dan in Oregon. Michael in Alberta, Canada. Michael's up next. Then Stan and Paul. That's it for calls. A pile of horse manure during Friday's hearings. And he just keeps saying, who are you? Tell me where you came from. And then he pauses so Whitaker can say, well, sir, I... He goes, whoa, I, I didn't tell you to talk, boy. So he had written all this up as a little slimy whatever he is, lawyer or whatever, to act like this. That's all they do is stunts and scams and frauds. Let's go ahead and roll the clip. Here it is. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jeffries. Uh, Mr. Whitaker, thank you for your presence here today. This hearing is important because there are many Americans throughout the country who are confused. I'm confused. I really am. We're all trying to figure out who are you, where did you come from, and how the heck did you become the head of the Department of Justice? He pauses. So hopefully, he can And then it goes on from there. He says, well, I'm going I'm to play the rest of it. Let's just start it over again. We're, we're going to do this. This is a very important clip. So no matter how long it takes, no matter what it takes, let's just start it over. Hit refresh, whatever we got to do. Let's just, we're going to, the whole rest of the show is this right now. It's just all we're doing. We're going to play this, okay? We're going to play this because, because this is so illustrative of the arrogance and the lies and the corruption. Because he pauses. Tell us who you are. Well, I'm, well, I didn't tell you to talk to me. It's like, hey, shake my hand. I'm too cool to talk to you. Shake my hand. woo -hoo. And then Sheila Jackson Lee does it. All of them do it. Just shaking with hate of America. But none of them want to leave America. So here it is again. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jeffries. Uh, Mr. Whitaker, thank you for your presence here today. This hearing is important because... There are many Americans throughout the country who are confused. I'm confused. I really am. We're all trying to figure out who are you, where did you come from, and how the heck did you become the head of the Department of Justice? So hopefully you can help me work through this confusion. All right, well, I'm, I mean, Congressman, not... I'm, Mr. Whitaker, that was a statement, not a question. Okay. I assume you know the difference. The investigation in the possible Trump-Russia collusion in the 2016 election has resulted in 37 indictments. Is that correct? I believe that number is correct, but most of those folks were um, Russian citizens. 34 individuals have been indicted. All right, so let's stop right there. And, and it just goes on and on. Just the, just the, the nastiness, the lowliness, the, the stinking uh, anti-Americanism. This is what's been created, and it went on for hours. So let's pull up Sheila Jackson Lee. We'll go back to your calls. This is Sheila Jackson Lee uh, heading up the committee with her cape on. She's got a superwoman cape on, and she's up there doing the same nasty stuff. This country is gone if we don't stop stuff like this. I mean, these people will do anything, like the... Kavanaugh hearings, you name it. I mean, this, these are a bunch of scum. Dangerous scum. So here she is, and there's just hours of this. This is all they did. It's never been done before. Just frothing hate, just frothing. Here it is. Let's play it. And with the short time that I have, I want to make sure that your questions are answered in a yes or no matter. Uh, this is the first oversight hearing we have had in the Justice Department almost 15 months. You did not have a confirmation hearing, and you have not yet appeared for an oversight hearing. Yes or no? Yes or no? Congresswoman, I am the acting. Yes or no? Sure. Have you appeared? Oh, no, start it over. Look at that big old giant wig she's got on the back of her head, so that she doesn't look like her head's a little peanut. I mean, imagine if Whitaker was wearing a big old giant fake black toupee on his head. We'd all make fun of him, like the guy that was on Tucker Carlson. I'll show him in a minute. It's just it's like, what's up with leftist and weird-ass heritage? Like, she's got this giant, I'm a Martian space alien, big old beehive thing on the back of her head that's obviously not hers. But now it's like five times bigger. Pull it up. And then 
And then, and then, and, and again, she's this total fraud. Just everything about her is a fraud. She's wearing a cape. A cape. Here, 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 let's go back to her. Here, here, here. And with the short time that I have, I want to make sure that your questions are answered in a yes or no matter. Uh, this is the first oversight hearing we have had in the Justice Department almost 15 months. You did not have a confirmation hearing, and you have not yet appeared for an oversight hearing. Yes or no? Yes or no? Congresswoman, I am the acting. Yes or no? Attorney. Have you appeared before an oversight hearing in the Congress? Congresswoman, I have not. It has been 10 years. years witness, before. Will, witness will answer the question as asked, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yes. Chairman, if the if the Department of Inquiry, if the if he has feels that a yes or no is appropriate, he'll answer in a yes or no. If he does not feel it's appropriate, he should be able to answer in an appropriate as many Democrat administration officials have done before this committee before. This uh, that is unreal. The, the member has only five minutes, and if she if you know, we've just discovered that we have a yes or no answer, amazing. she's entitled to it. I will not allow the witness to stall and waste members' time. Where were you when Ms. Lynch and Mr. Holder were here? Mr. Question. Chairman, may I have my time restored? I think it was at yes, four minutes. Yes, you may. Thank you. Again, uh, Mr. Attorney General, uh, the question is, did you have a confirmation hearing and has it been more than 10 uh, years? That's since enough. You I want to go to your phone calls and get back to how does the president save himself, and I'll get to that at the start of the next segment. I said I'd do it the segment, but, but, but we're behind. I've got so many other clips I want to play, but the nastiness is like, tell us exactly who you are where you came from. Well, I came from, I didn't, that's a question, obviously, you idiot. Shake my hand. Woo! Don't you try to shake my hand, obviously, I wasn't trying to do that. I mean, it's like junior high garbage here. Junior high garbage. We got Paul in Las Vegas saying they're ready to assassinate the president. We've got Teddy. Trump may just let them come. He needs to investigate Mueller. Yeah, a special prosecutor, the right to assassinate him. L let's talk to Paul in Vegas. Paul, what do you think is going on here? Um, Alex, thanks for taking my call. Um, I think they're after the president in so many different ways. They've, they've got him hemmed up. And uh, what they're going to do is the same thing they did with Ross Perot, if you remember. Um, you know, as he was a candidate and as he became popular. They threatened, to, like kill us, threatened to kill his daughter. Absolutely, and I think that's what's coming. I think you're going to see a complete change of 180. Um, the things that you're talking about with Trump, the things that he's been able to do and not been able to do, um, I think are subject to that. He's in a lot of trouble, and we got to protect him. I love our president. Real quick, um, I'm an inventor. I take your brain force. I figured out a way to make hydrogen fuel cells from razor blades by recycling your razor blades, and they're wonderful. Um, I just wanted to give myself a plug real quick. My name is Dan Franks. I'm on Facebook. I got a GoFundMe page. I'm trying to pay for the lawyers and uh, um, mechanical drawings on that stuff, but um, they're absolutely fantastic, and they're going to change how we make energy. I'll check it out, Paul. I appreciate your call, man. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Teddy in Chicago. Teddy, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex, you talk about the metaph metaphysical laws of the universe. The Roman Republic, they tried to save by a killing Caesar. What we need to do, his, Trump's asset is the American patriots, the American people. We need to stand up. In the meantime, formulate his strike forces and let them come. Through their aggression, total Gandhi logic, they'll be the aggressors in history. And then we'll have to defend our republic. I believe that. Might well, Trump is fatalistic. Do so you think Trump's setting himself up in a Christ-like way to be destroyed, and he believes out of that comes the victory? Is that what you're saying? I do believe that, but he still needs to declare the emergency. That's a side issue. He still needs to stand up and keep being president. But in terms of them trying to set him up and bring him down, let them try. What an outrage. What a danger. But I want to go back to that subject I mentioned in, in the second segment of tonight's show, Alexandria Cortez, or AOC, as she's known, the perfect, dumbed down, looks like a meth head, uh, low IQ idiot, to lead us into Venezuela or North Korea and hell. She comes out, as everyone knows, with her green plan. Was it on Thursday? And within 12 hours, she takes it down. I was on the congressional site myself reading it that morning. And NPR had it, everybody reported it was hers. And all the archive sites, Bing, and all the rest of them. Let's show TV viewers uh, up there at the top. That's bing.com forward slash cash you know, right there in the archive. You can go to the Wayback Machine, go to all of them. It's right there. So 
She says, get rid of cows because their flatulence is bad. She says, uh, get rid of airplanes. They're evil. Uh, and people that don't want to work, people that can't work or don't want to work is the quote, give them free stuff. And so instead of defending it, once everybody said this is incredibly bad, she said it doesn't exist and put some weird professor with his giant toupee on Tucker Carlson and other shows to say that we were liars and that we'd created fake news. So they'll lie even when they're caught. They don't care. Watch Cortez Gaslight's Green New Deal. That's Cornell University professor, green activist, and Cortez advisor, Robert Hockett. And the guy literally... Show him on screen, please. He looks like Bozo the Clown. He's trying to look all ironic. Full screen. You can't get the full horror. He's got weird, like, green teeth. And then he just goes, oh, Liar never existed. We never said that. He even has a fake Atlantic, you know, like, fake British accent. How dare you? Listen, Buffy, first and how the third. So this is the reality we're dealing with here is that they come out and they won't stand up when Trump says, let's not kill babies after they're born. Cortez, the Speaker of the House, Pelosi, none of them will even stand up. So the mysterious case of AOC's scrubbed Green New Deal details. And then it goes on from there. Meanwhile, we have all the screenshots, all the articles, her tweeting it in the morning on her own Twitter, she doubles down on free money for lazy people and admits that, well, that's actually in her plan. And, and, and the quote is, people unable to work are those who don't want to work. So Trump's come out and said, this is a great idea. You should embrace this. We're only we turn off all the carbon and no one else does. And we literally, most studies show that about 80% of the population would die within two years with no carbon in the U.S. But that's okay. Because we have a fop with a big giant you know, giant, I mean, imagine I was on TV with like huge toupee, like a foot, like a, eight inches tall. And I was like, hi, I'm Bob's big boy. Do what I say. No, we didn't do that. But here's the actual Green New Deal facts from the archive of Bing search engine. And it says right here, all the stuff that they're going to do. But she says they never said it, even though we have them all saying so th th this is who these people are this is this is how they operate this is the world they want to build this is what they want to do now i haven't gotten to this yet and we're not going to be able to because the show's going to end the broadcast is going to end you're on the streams at infowars.com or newswars.com infowars.com for slash show counter think with mike adams is always powerful he tapes an hour every friday for the sunday show that's coming up then I'll be back 11 a.m. tomorrow. David Knight's uh, over his heart attack. He, he'll be back uh, 8 a.m. You got the war with Owen Schroyer, uh, 3 p.m. every day. But China got Google to help build their autonomous killer robots and have announced they'll be the first to launch them. That's all right here in mainstream news today. Didn't even get to that. Didn't even get to that or Gallup. Five million Latin Americans. They, they, they pulled. Latin Americans, 5 million are planning to come to the U.S. in 2019, and Trump's going to be down on the border tomorrow in Texas. We're going to be covering it. Our reporters uh, are down there. we got Drew down there, the camera guy, the intrepid cameraman. And we've also got Greg Reese. That will all be on the regular weekday show and the morning shows and the afternoon shows tomorrow with live coverage. And don't worry, Pete O'Rourke, he's going to be down there bringing in like a lighthouse, the big unwashed socialist caravans that the U.N. are running to overwhelm our judges and fully break our border so that everyone knows they're using our laws of openness against us to fully destroy the country. That's all coming up tomorrow. We'll be covering it here. But I want to shift to something else. I want to shift to something else as we end this broadcast tonight. I want to shift to just a little compilation we've put together. We're going to post to Infowars.com and Newswars.com. Demonic liberals. Compilation just of demonic liberals because 
I saw this clip, and I'll cover it more tomorrow, of a California abortion operator see someone at the allotted 20 yards away from the property just saying, Jesus loves the children. He comes over to demonic voice and gets in his face. And, and this is what they all do. If you, if you go, like leftists now will break into this satanic, weird behavior. So I thought we'd show some of this tonight about the demonic infestation, the apparent mass demonic possession of leftists, not just here, but it's being reported worldwide. Here it is. sir for murdering babies why because it's a sin before god why well stinky breath yeah why? that's pretty that's pretty evil of you sir yeah i am and, and i hope and pray that you yeah. well that's what you do to babies huh yeah i love it you love it huh yeah i do okay i hope that you come to christ sir oh i'd never go to christ I hope that you come to Christ. No, sir. I don't go to Christ. Yeah, you. I don't you, listen to Christ. You, you will have a darkened heart, sir. I do have a darkened yeah. heart. Yeah. You have a darkened heart. I do. I do very, very much. And so. You will stand yeah. before God in judgment. Yes, day, I will. Day. Every day. You will stand before God in judgment. Yes, day, I will. Day. Every day. All of the babies that I you love have it. Killed. I love it. Hey, look, it's a dead zombie. Are you hard to do this? Are you hard to do The pro lifers talk about babies in, in Texas, then women show up and go, We love Satan, Satan, Satan. Here's the video. She's surrounded by Democrats going, Satan, Satan, Satan. And Democrats are surrounding the Christian woman saying, Hell, Satan. And we'd even show you all the footage we've got of them saying, we kill our babies, we love death. We'll have it all for you tomorrow. All for you tomorrow. When we go out and these people say, we kill our kids, we love Satan, we love Satan, we want to kill our kids. They'll go, planetary attack. You're like, well, no, they're not doing it to freak us out. That's who they are. 